Hello everyone, this is Nicolas from P2 Design and today we are here for a short breakdown VFX video. We are going to make some spooky eyes inside Unity Engine. I'm going to show you some technical tips when creating the texture and how to make a simple shader that will control the color and the luminosity of the eyes. And finally, we'll see how to make the eyes blinking animation within the particle system. For the texture, I'm using the channel packing method, allowing me to store two textures in one by using the red and green channel. In Photoshop, you can display and access any channels through the Channels tab that can be activated by going in the Window tab and clicking on Channels. You can draw any kind of eye shape you want, but make sure they are at the center of the texture. Here, the red channel is storing the eye shape mask that will serve as the emissive mask, with a white iris on top of the grade support layer. And the green channel stores the same ice shape mask but brighter, entirely filled and blurred quite a lot. Making the opacity mask larger than the emissive mask will display a dark shape around the emissive part that will add some contrast and increase the readability of the effect. Before starting this part, if you don't know how to create a shader in Unity, I highly recommend you to watch the Campfire tutorial video where we learn how to make a stylish campfire VFX step by step from scratch. Here's an overview of the shader and I'm going to highlight the two main elements used in it. After setting the shader to transport mode and adding a texture property referencing my spooky eye texture, I've created a vertex color node that will get its RGB and alpha output splitted to respectively be multiplied by the emissive mask of the red channel and the opacity mask of the green channel of the spooky eye texture. With this setup, I can use the particle system start color parameter and color over lifetime module to control the color of my ice particle as well as the opacity over time. And finally, I'm using this UV node, splitting its output and only using the alpha one as a custom vertex data. This will allow me to control the emissive intensity of the lifetime of the particle directly in the particle system. It is quite important and we will see more about that later on. I will display the final shader here, feel free to replicate it and experiment with it. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top-rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design to get 10% off on any of the courses. Concerning the particle system, Let's talk about each module used for the effect and the interaction with the shader. First, in the renderer module, I reference my newly created spooky eye material to be displayed on billboards, with a render adjustment setting on view, making each billboard facing the camera. Then, in the global module, the looping mode is enabled to make our particle system emit particles every cycle. Note that the time of a cycle is defined by the duration parameter in seconds. We also got some variations in the lifetime and start size parameters with a random between two constants mode, and the color of the eyes is referenced in the start color parameter. For the shape module, I set the shape mode to box to constrain the particles to spawn inside a box volume. Following with the color of a lifetime module, Remember that the alpha output of the vertex color is linked to the opacity mask in the shader, so we can control the opacity of the particle with the alpha keys at the top and make a simple alpha gradient over the particle lifetime that will make it fade in and fade out. When it comes to the blinking animation, it's actually a simple trick where I use the size of a lifetime module to make the y axis of my mesh scale up and down through a curve to simulate a blinking eye. And finally, we will use the Customs Vertex Data module, just as seen during the shader breakdown part, to control the emissive intensity, making it drop during the blinking animation. 
It helps a lot to set the effect for it simulates the eyelid closing and not letting any light coming from the eye itself. The use of custom Vertex data in the particle system can be activated in the renderer module by ticking the custom Vertex streams option and adding any custom parameters. Here's a quick description of what is happening while using custom Vertex data with a custom 1x, y, z and w option in relation to the shader made previously. The custom 1 parameter part refers to the set of parameters used in the particle system custom data module. The text code 0 or the default UV set is the UV0 channel in the UV node in shader graph. And the XYZW part represents individual vectors we can use corresponding to the channels of the UV node. Here, the Y component refers to the alpha output of the UV node. And finally, to synchronize the emissive intensity drop and the blinking animation, I copy and paste the same curve of the Y axis in the size of a lifetime module to the custom Velex data Y parameter and make the dropping part of the curve starts earlier and ends later. And that's it, we got some spooky eyes ready to be implemented in our 3D environment. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like this breakdown and learn something from it, let me know in the comment section. I'll see you soon for our next VFX video. Goodbye!